Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Hall. Charlie's been on the show before. Not only that, it's just he's a friend of mine, right? In full transparency, I just want to say that to everybody. I love who he is as a human and I love what his organization does. But there are some new things that are coming down the pipeline that I knew that I wanted to bring to our audience because as a fellow influence marketer, which Charlie is, there's a lot of insight that I want to make sure that all of you, our listeners, get to know. So, Charlie, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, Matt. Good to be back. So uh, for those of you who are watching this as a video, you know, Charlie is actually broadcasting from his mobile office unit, uh, which is actually what I like to call it. And uh, one of the cool things about you is, is you actually like to drive and travel to do a lot more in-person meetings. So so his dog's actually back there. He might have uh, bounced around to here. Just if he looks like he's out cold. That's awesome. <laughs> That's, yeah, um, we'll, we'll let him be out cold. You know? Yeah, we'll let him be. All right, brother. So So let's talk about what's new in Charlie's world. Aside from the camper, and I love it, you're right. I've been road tripping since I've been like 17 years old and it just felt so natural. And so anyway, this is fun. Love doing it, cruising around Texas this uh, this week. Matt, I actually came to you, you know, just for, for, you know, for, for, for transparency again. I came to you and I said, Matt, would you host me? Right, because I got something new to talk about. So we started, I think we published on Monday, the 12th episode which I believe makes me a statistical anomaly, you know, or at least it's eight brother, eight. eight, eight, eight point, yeah. All right. So we, we, uh, we published the 12th episode of RIA collective. Um, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm hoping to get, you know, hoping to get the story out. You create a wonderful forum to help make that happen. Um, it's doing good for a lot of people. And, uh, yeah, so just, you know, an opportunity to kind of chat on what REA Collective is and how it's benefiting the industry and, and see your smiling face again. There's an origin story here to REA Collective. So let's, let's start there. So let's, let's build the, let's kind of paint the picture, my friend. Sure. So, you know, I mean, th those of you who know me, right, have been, been working with advisors for a while. And that started, uh, that started in 98, 1998 with a company called 50 Below. So for you to recognize that name, that means you were legacy RBC or legacy Smith Barney or like, you know, anyway, so we did, uh, we were one of the first to market with websites for the wirehouses. And in my eight or so years, eight or 10 years with 50 below, I got very well acquainted with that side of the industry. Now, without going deep into the story, they were acquired by Emerald and rolled up into Broadridge, uh, you know, some years later. And I joined FMG for a little while, um, and that was really my foray into the independent side of the industry, the, you know, the IBDs specifically, um, and then introduction to RIAs later on. Um, and, uh, and so through that time, right, we're talking 20 years, through that time, Matt, and you've been around that long too, you'll, you'll echo this, I've watched this industry go independent. Right. Literally watch people as, you know, maybe a client of ours or a coaching client go from wirehouse to IBD and then to RIA. And that, that, that trend, incidentally, you know, speeds up at this point because it's so much easier to do today. But I've always kind of wondered why is a question, but also why do some people do it well? And I know a lot of people who really struggled with the transition, right? Litigation with home office, you know, whatever that is, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a stake in the ground right now that might not be real comfortable for some of the relationships I've built over the years. I find it very difficult for an advisor to be a captive advisor and also a fiduciary. I think that, yeah, and I'll, and, and so we'll, we'll, we'll get to why the, sh why the show started, because it's got, you know, it's got a, a beginning that there's a catalyst moment that kind of creates it, right? And and so it's really, the RA Collective is really, it's an interview, a collection of interviews with RA leadership, breakaway attorneys, plenty of advisors who have been through that transition, you know, wanted to hear their story, but also, <clears throat> excuse me, what did they do well? And what did they do not so well, right? So, you know, for those young advisors who maybe walked out of walked out of college, took their job at a at a wirehouse, and found out they were in really a hardcore sales environment versus you know a, an altruistic, 
helping people type environment that, that find themselves in a place right now where maybe they didn't expect themselves to be. We're creating a resource that then, you know, helps them transition to independence with more confidence, um, learn about the technologies that are available, um, hear from attorneys who have seen all the good things and all the bad things, and really just create a community around this brand that helps people go independent. I think the industry serves clients better as an independent industry. I think the the stake that you just planted in the ground there, you know, I think that the word fiduciary uh, is commonly misused, very misrepresented, and philosophically has major holes in it. Uh, and I haven't been very quiet about that on on this show uh, when I have challenged people about how is that actually in your client's best interest. So uh, uh, expand on that a little bit more. So let let's talk about why your um, why you're you know putting that stake down? I know that you have a lot of relationships with a lot of those older you know captive environments. It's got to be kind of a risky slash scary thing for you. So there's got to be something uh, in your heart that's telling you you got to do this. Yeah. So I I coach you know eight, maybe eight coaching clients now, which is a much smaller part. You know, it used to be a, a bigger part of what I did. Um, and uh, one of those advisors is a private wealth advisor. Um, at one of the big firms. I'll just, you know, I'll just leave names out of it. doesn't matter who it is, right? But he's a private wealth advisor in the Northeast. And so, you know, in that, in that kind of, you know, top echelon, he's, he's really, he's targeting, you know, 2 million plus people, 1.5, $2 million minimum assets, right? And so the coaching, our coaching routine is every two weeks. And I get on the phone with this particular gentleman. And, you know, this is, again, I've been, I've been watching this happen for 20 years and there's kind of been this buildup. And this is, six months ago, maybe. Right. And I get on the phone with this gentleman that I'm coaching and, uh, and, uh, we're catching up and he says, great thing. You know, I've, I've brought in two households since, since our last conversation, that's two weeks. I'm like, dang dude, you know, that's four or $5 million. Nice work. And he says, yeah, one's 300,000 and one's 250. And I said, why you can't even serve with those people. Why would you do that? And he said, the firm offers a bonus if I bring in X number of households in this time period. And so in order to hit that bonus, I brought on these two very small households. And I went, but you, you know, like, that's good for you. That's good for the firm, but that's not good for the client. Like they need to be with an advisor that services that size household so they can get optimal service versus landing in your book. So you get paid, the firm gets paid and you can't even afford to talk to them. And I'll tell you what, I got off that call and Matt, I was pissed. You know, like that 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 drove something and I was like, well, something's gotta happen. And at the same time, I was chatting with a couple of guys who are not in the industry, but just about podcasting and doing a podcast and, um, you know, something you know a ton about. And, um, and you know, that kind of became the forum to get that word out. But I, yeah, I was pissed, man. I was motivated. Like this is this is really bad. It's really bad for you know for the client. Great for the, great for the advisor who gets the incentive, and great for the firm that, you know, has more assets under management that they can grow with over the years. But anyway, so that was that was kind of the pivot point where it was like, you know, at some point, and and maybe it's an age thing or an experience thing. At some point, you can't keep your mouth closed anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, well, you you never could, but. The rest of us, at some point, we reach a, you know, we got to, I can't keep my mouth closed anymore. So that was really the foundation of, of, uh, of where RA Collective came from. So let's talk about the services that you're going to be offering with this collective. This is very interesting because, you know, there are all sorts of recruiters out there and you know, all of them, there are a lot of them are our friends or both of us. What is the difference? What is this idea? I understand right now it, it, it's education, right? But, but I'm, I, Charlie, it's you. So you have bigger plans for this. You're probably looking to grow it. You're probably looking to offer more products and services. Let's talk about what the vision is here. Well, I really, you know, I, and, and in the foundation, I really didn't have bigger plans. Of course you think, okay, great. We can get some sponsorship. And certainly there's ways to monetize this through either my internal team that's helping me produce it, or, you know, people I know in the industry, people are blowing my mind a little bit. Right. So the, the concept that keeps coming up is community, right? Like, like how do we build a community around this where you've got advisors who, you know, who, who need the education. And then maybe you've got recruiters that can then open conversation more easily with advisors who are 
are, are you know, positioning themselves in this community. Of course, we'd have to do it with some anonymity because we don't want Big Brother looking over their shoulder. But yeah, you know, not that we've got that built yet. Um, so nobody run out there and build it, please. Uh, <laughs> or do, I don't care. Like really, we got a pure play, right? Um, but that's kind of the vision right now, right? Is so, and, and, and maybe that even disrupts recruiting in the industry a little bit. That's certainly not the intent. Yeah, I like people getting big paychecks when they bring a, a high net worth advisor to a firm. That, um, yeah, get paid by all means. But certainly connecting the two on that, the two people on both sides of that equation um, becomes a possibility. And so that's, that's probably the step we take with it next. And, you know, creating some education behind what are the technologies and, you know, where are the resources and who's your mentor and, you know, connecting people with, uh, with advisors. Need help. When, I, when I was a coach, when people became an RIA, there was this unbelievable learning curve, right? And instead of having repository of information, they always had to just like go to one person. And a lot of times it was the recruiter. And the recruiter would be sitting down and, and I was even in on some of these meetings, Charlie. And they're like, you're not ready. You have all of this stuff that you need to do. And then my client would say, Matt, do you know what to do? And I'm like, I don't know. That's not what I do. So being able to, you know, it's all about finding the gaps, Charlie, right? Where, where are the gaps in our industry to help people transition? I was at Market Council Summit the first time I went. And I remember I, uh, we were doing a bunch of interviews and I was interviewing somebody. I actually don't even remember who it was. And it was quite a while ago. And um, he quoted Brian Hamburger, who said that they're expecting not, this was two, three years ago, 9,000 wirehouse, like big producers, they were going to leave the wirehouse. And he said, all of you who are RIAs and who are servicing RIAs and who help with that recruiter stuff, you guys need to be ready for it. But there is a really big gap and a podcast can be a great way for education, but you are really good at building community. So let's expand that idea a little bit, right? So, so with your, your social advisors, right, you built a great, you know, microcosmic communities. Uh, you're going to use some of that same model potentially, or what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've got a, uh, um, with social advisors, we built some really nice like distribution networks, if you will. Right. So, you know, our, our monthly guest webinar, I, I can see transferring a lot of the same stuff we're doing at social advisors to help build the community. Um, frankly, I think, you know, the people who are kind enough to spend time on the show. And of course, you know, there's, if they're recruiting, they want to be there because, you know, we're building a listening audience of people that, that are ideal for them, you know, uh, just really getting, you know, collaboration from those folks as well. They've all got something unique that they can bring to the table as far as education. I'll tell you that the one thing, Matt, that comes up in every conversation is the importance of building a team around yourself, or maybe, maybe said differently, the difficulty that people go through, you know, you go RIA, great. Now you're head cook and bottle washer, right? You, you're, you know, the assets rise, you got to hire an assistant or whatever that next role is for your infrastructure. And that, that I find, and I, I'll echo it in, in building my own business, right? That's the hardest part right? is how do you find the right support, the right, you know, cultural fits, you know, people who complement who you are as a person, you know, so that, that's one of the big things that's come out, you know, yeah, I think uh, uh, a lot of advice on, you know, what to do six, 12, 18 months in advance about your relationships. Great interview with Corey Kupfer of Kupfer Law. He's a breakaway attorney in New York uh, and a really solid dude, like really big part of his community, big part of, the, of our community. You know, so we've got some really great guests who are there to give, you know, and, and, and hopefully they find a recruit in there if that's what they're looking for. But they're there to give and in building the community they'll be equally there. You know, I mean, they're, I'm not doing it alone, I guess is my point, right? We've got some great people who are, are helping out that way. Well, and I love, again, this is one of the reasons why I think you and I have connected so well. It's that abundance mindset, right? You know that as the more you give to this industry that we're both so fiercely passionate about, it will come back to us however it is meant to come back to us. But but when it comes to some of those pieces, right? And, and again, as you, because I've been doing this for a long time, this is the top advisor marketing podcast. And people might be saying, well, Matt, why are you talking about another podcast on this podcast? 
that doesn't have to do with marketing. And I'm going to challenge everybody's thinking immediately. Yes, this does. One of the number one reasons why people go RIA is because they want the freedom to be able to actually say what do they believe. That's number one. And number two, they want to have a lot more control. What are you seeing? I mean, this is your, your way more in this world than I am. What are the things that you're seeing? Why are people mass exiting these large corporations because it's freaking happening. It is. It is. Technology is, you know, really paramount, right? So you, um, you know, when you're dealing with a budget at a, at a large firm, whatever technology we're talking about comes up on that budget every five or six or eight or 10 years or whatever, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, the firm dictates there. So if, if Wells Fargo advisors puts in new marketing technology this year, and they have, uh, so that's a real example. The last time they did that, it's like eight or 10 years ago, right? Now, so they've been, they've been band-aiding it along and finally it comes around on the budget again. And now it's, it's shiny, it's bright, it's awesome. You and I both know open market's going to make that thing look rusty in a year and a half or two years, Right. And they're still going to have to wait another six years for for that capital, you know, that capital investment. Um, so technology certainly is is paramount to that decision. Compliance is a huge part of it as well. You just you know, you just said it right. You want to be able to say what you want to say. Matt, how many podcasts do you do for, you know, for captive advisors? We can't just, they want everything scripted. They want to pre-approve everything that you want to say. They've got the last one that we had. I had a three page single space disclosure that I had to read at the end. Of the, it was, so the podcast was like 23 minutes. The disclosure was seven minutes long. But I mean, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's that it's, uh, you know, I, uh, I had a, a young coaching client and this is a couple of years ago, three or four years ago. And, um, he really wanted to use Instagram and, you know, he was with an insurance, you know, an insurance firm, big insurance firm. And he, I mean, he literally left that firm for the reason that he, he had an idea of who his, who his audience was to his credit. I see his content all the time to his credit. He is blowing it up, but he couldn't get in front of that young affluent audience in his position. Right. So, so, compliance was totally dictated his move and it does for a lot of people you know we talked about it already right the inability to actually act as a fiduciary like great that you've got a cfp but if you're bringing on households so you can get your two percent bonus and they're the wrong households that you can't service that cfp is out the window right i mean really you know your your fiduciary responsibility is is gone you've forgotten all about that for the sake of your two percent bonus it's crazy man that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, freedom, right? Another one of the big one is freedom. Um, we, we interviewed uh, an advisor, Rachel Burns, um, and Rachel's great. I and mean, she's, uh, in fact, you know, we do the pre-call, right? 20, 30 minutes, get acquainted. What are we going to talk about? And Rachel didn't share with me, but, you know, she came through, I, th I think she went Merrill Morgan and then went independent with Ameriprise before starting her RIA. So she was already independent with Ameriprise. She'd already made that transition, but her family had some health issues and she just couldn't put in the hours to, you know, to contribute to that team. So, you know, she, um, yeah, so she, she formed her RIA because it created freedom for her. You know, you know, the one thing everybody says, I wish I'd have done it sooner. Every one of them, man, every person I've interviewed has said that. Like, I wish I'd have done it sooner. And, the, you know, the big firms want to scare you a little bit. Oh, my gosh, you're in charge of everything. I wish I'd have done it sooner. Well, I think one of the – so there's two major apprehensions, and, and, and please shoot holes in this, uh, as as you will. Um, the, the first major apprehension is, is lawsuits, right? So non-compete, non-solicitation, that's a huge one. And then I don't know what I don't know. So how, how do you envision this new medium that you're using is going to help bridge those two major issues? First, I don't know what I don't know either. I'm not an expert, right? I'm not, I'm certainly not an expert in transition, right? Um, I'm an advocate of it, but I'm certainly not an expert in all the details. So listen, there's a ton of consultants out there. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say it like that, but there's a lot of quality consultants that, you know, if you try to do this in 1998, 
it was a major undertaking. The technology wasn't there for the open market like it is today. Um, but there's so many services that are there to support you. I had a chat with um, Blake, I can't remember Blake's last name, but his, uh, um, his business is RIA Compliance Technology. Right. So he's got, a, I mean, he's literally got software that you can layer in for 150 or 200 bucks, archives all your email, archives all your LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter stuff. Um, you know, it takes care of everything you need in case you get audited. And I, I met Blake through uh, one of our podcast guests, Mark Aaron's over at, a, he's got a Money Managers Inc. Great name, right? Oh, he ended up with that, but great name, Money Managers Inc. And he said, Mark said, like, this guy saved me from trouble in an audit. You should meet him. Yeah. And so I met Blake and sure enough, Blake's got an awesome platform. Um, but there's plenty of consultants out there, like literally $3,000 and you'll find a consultant that's going to file all your state and our federal paperwork. Right. Now you got to go set up your own website, but that's fun. Right. You, you finally have the freedom to, to express yourself like you want to, right. That stuff's fun. Setting up the brand is fun. Get your social out there. Put your content, you know, your, your content plan together. Build out a good CRM instead of the piece of crap that the firm wants you to use. So there's there's a lot of freedom and I understand that it creates a lot of fear. Like some people would rather be told. And in that case, stay where you're at, right? I don't that's I don't begrudge people who are captive advisors. But so there's that freedom creates fear. But there's a lot of people who have been through it before. Listen to listen to that Corey. If you're you know if you're worried about the legal ramifications, listen to that Corey Kupfer episode. That's a good one, you know. So, yeah, I think um, I don't know. I've gone on so long, Matt. I forgot what you asked. I just kind of keep talking. No, you just answer both of them, right? So, so the idea that you have in this network and on this show, you have provided education and resources for people to reach out. And I don't think people really truly understand that that's what a podcast is for. Podcast isn't just for you to talk about stuff you know about, but it's hopefully uh, what we believe is great podcasting is when you're, you're utilizing your network to help bring other experts in to share their knowledge where you're just the medium in which you know, or the media that allows people like you, Charlie, to come on a show like this and, you know, really talk about it. Everybody, you know, it, I can't tell you, in fact, I, I, you're, you're my fourth podcast today, something like that. Uh, so I interviewed two advisors today, which is very rare uh, for the top advisor marketing podcast. And both of them are an RIA and both of them echoed the exact same thing that you said, which is, man, we should have done that way earlier. Like, I can't believe I just, I, cause it was fear. Right. In, in understanding, you know, I always say that, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. Right. So fear actually isn't real. Right. Uh, it's something that you impose on something because actually it hasn't really happened yet. And if you can listen to a podcast, if you can join a community and if you can lean on the resources like what Charlie's doing, hopefully that will remove enough of that fear so that you can not only be a fiduciary, but you can not and not only be the advisor you want. But here's the best thing you can finally be who you want to be in business. I, I think I found it with age, you know, when I was, I was in my twenties and, you know, 50 below the, the website company I was with when I got started, we were first to market, you know, the, the, the big firms, they either built their, their websites internally or they went to 50 below. In other words, those are your options. Right. And so I was, I was like this character in a suit, Matt, you know, my suit and tie and the, 27 years old in the conference room with the CMO at Morgan Stanley going, what the hell am I doing here? Like fish out of water, imposter syndrome, like, you know, like times 10. And I'd have kicked my, you know, my, my younger self would have kicked me in the shins, right? I was a skateboard kid, little punk, little, you know, I mean, so who the hell, are, who'd you turn into, man, right? So, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere between there now, that, that conference room guy and the skateboard punk, you know, so I'm somewhere between there. But the freedom that I get with social advisors even, you know, that's that that company's nine years old now and has kind of taken on a life of its own at this point. But the freedom that I get with that independence, that's what everyone, every person who's going to work in the high rise with suit and tie who's like, what am I doing here? Right? A lot of times the RIA creates that opportunity for them to get back to who they want to be versus where the firm they're with wants to push them. You know, and, and there's there's uh, yeah, there's. It feels good, man. I kind of, I think I've discovered it more with age, kind of more confidence in yourself or whatever that might be much more relaxed. It feels good. Be who you are. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, if I look back on, you know, my 20 some odd year old self, you know, that's, that's the number one thing. In fact, I think I was pretty much myself in my twenties, but really thirties up until probably 45. And I was trying to be somebody else, the, the watches and the cars and the suits and the stupidness, uh, you know, the ridiculous why I mean, wine. I mean, I got caught up in all of that stuff. Not, not only was it terribly, terribly expensive and I was living way beyond my means, but it just felt bad. And then I start realizing that people want to know who I am. Uh, and then when I can be myself, I don't have any competition because nobody else is Matt Haller. Nobody else is Charlie. I mean, that makes a really, really big difference. All right. My favorite question to ask my friend is this, what should I have asked you that I didn't? Oh my gosh. What should you have asked me that I didn't, uh, that you didn't when you can be a guest on the podcast? Oh, yeah. well, oh you mean like our listeners or, or me personally, or you personally. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to work on that. I'd love to be on your show. I mean, that would be absolutely fantastic because obviously I have huge rationale for wanting to be because you and I target the exact same people people. we want to work with our, I know, dude, I'm right there with you. Dynamic duo. And, and, and and the the cool thing about this, we target the same people, but we have absolutely complimentary, you know, we, we, we bring something very complimentary to the industry. So, you know, I think um, that compliance conversation, you just, the, 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 the podcast, the RA collective podcast really is taking on a life of its own, right? People are signing up that I'm not reaching out to anymore and we're only 12 episodes in, right? So it's gotten, it's, it's become more fun because I also hired a guy to help me process it now. So I'm not doing all the bad stuff on it anymore. So it's become more fun because it's more focused on talking about people who have something to bring to the community. You have a ton to bring to people who are walking out of that captive you know, let's call it maybe stuffy compliance environment who now get an opportunity to spread their wings and a forum like, like podcasting, you know, is, is, uh, it's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. The conversation is easy to make happen. And I, I think that's why RIA collective is a podcast and maybe it's, maybe, maybe it takes on a life where it's not only a podcast, but it was like, I had that conversation with that advisor that brought on the small households. And it was like, how do I get this word out the quickest? And and this was the easy forum, right? I mean, this was the easiest way to have an impact pretty quickly. We started doing interviews maybe two, three months ago. You know, it's, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's not, uh, you know, we've only been at it maybe 60, 90 days. And we got 12 published. We got maybe eight or nine in the bank and people people signing up every day to, to be on in the future. So, um, we got to get you on that schedule. Yeah, and I'm going to preview everybody. The title of that podcast is Don't Say Stupid Stuff, uh, which is really the best way for you not to get in trouble with compliance. But Charlie, dude, uh, you know, it's always it's always nice to just hang out with you. It's always nice to pick your brain and see what you're thinking because it's fascinating. Uh, as scary as your uh, brain might be for you, it's fascinating for all of us to be able to see what's knocking around in that noggin of yours. Um yeah. So, okay. So, uh, how one, we'll make sure we have links to the podcast. Uh, what else do you want people to know so that they can, uh, can connect with you? Yeah. So podcast is RAcollective.com And of course it's available on your, uh, on your, your various platforms. Um, we'd love you to su- subscribe if you want to be interviewed, if you feel like you've got something to bring to that community. Um, I'd love to, you know, I'm happy to interview you. Let's have a conversation first, figure out what that's all about. I'm, I'm fortunate to be the only Charlie Van Durven on the planet. So I'm easy to find. Uh, you know, hook up on LinkedIn or RA Collective and send us a message there. Um, yeah, that's 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 it. I mean, we're really working on kind of the the foundation of the community. Um, and uh, I'd really I take a lot from Cheryl, right? Cheryl Hickerson, who is a mutual friend of ours with females in finance and doing something so good for the industry. Um, so I'm really looking at what she's doing, and and I don't know if I want to model exactly after after females in finance. Cheryl's got her thing, but we're kind of following that as a as a model, right? And uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for the RA Collective community. And if you feel like you've got something to contribute to those advisors who are in a captive spot, that that's not the right place for them, um, or if you are one of those advisors, paying attention to Matt because you're you know you're getting you're getting ready to make that jump. We'd love to have you in that community too. So. I'd say LinkedIn is probably easiest, Matt, and RACollective.com. 
and and you're wonderfully responsive on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I just really want to, you know, sing your praises on that. You're very accessible. Uh, and, and that's that's one of the reasons why you've built such a nice fan base, right? It's because, you know, people can reach out to you and, and ask you questions. All right, everybody. Well, uh, just to kind of wrap things up here. Uh, number one, you know, Charlie just said one of the re one of the ways that he wanted to get this information out was to make it as easy as possible and to get as many people to consume the content as possible. And he said podcasting was the way to do it. If you want to learn how to start your own podcast, all you have to do is go to podrocketacademy.com, join for free, 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 free. So here's the thing. I recorded a course called Podcasting 101. I'm telling you, everything you could ever want to know about a podcast is in 101. If From zero to getting your first 12 episodes in the can, we teach you for free. Because here's the deal. We just want you to stop being the best kept secret in your area. We believe that podcasting is the easiest, most efficient way for you to do that. You can outsource it to us. We'd love to have you as a client, or you can do it yourself. What is important is you just need to do it. So for Charlie and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Haller, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.